Hello and welcome to Through the Bible with Les Feldick. An Oklahoma rancher and farmer, Les Feldick has been teaching homestyle Bible classes for 20 years in Iowa, Oklahoma, and Texas. Les Feldick's unique style of Bible teaching has made the books of the Bible come to life. When Les is teaching, it's so interesting that people say time just seems to fly by. And now, here is Les Feldick. There we go. Okay, good to have everybody back with us. And once more, we're going to go right back into the book of Acts and uh, carry on on our study on this book of transition. And again, we'd like to welcome our television audience. And uh, I always have to express my thanks for your letters and your financial help, for your prayers and uh, everything. We couldn't do it without you. And we always appreciate the folk that come in for these studio classes. And again, we could never talk to just a camera. I, uh, that was one of the first things that when they asked me to teach on television, I said, well, one thing I have to have is a class in front of me. I can't just talk to a bare room and a camera. And number two, I will not wear a suit and tie. So I laid down some things that a lot of people had to agree to. I said, I'll never appeal for money. And that kind of shook them up. And they said, you can't stay on the air if you don't beg for money. Well, then I won't even start. And those of you who know now, we've been on going on five years, and we've never yet asked for a dime, and we've never had to. The Lord has always supplied, and we trust He will. And any time He stops, I've said it before, and I'll say it again, then the cows will get my full-time attention. <laughs> but uh, until that time, why, we trust we can stay on the air until the Lord meets us in the air. And again, we like to always let folk know that we have videotapes as well as now the printed booklets of all the past programs coming all the way up from Genesis 1-1, clear through the Old Testament, the, the Gospels, and now we're this far into the book of Acts. I don't know how many it's going to take to finish the whole book, but uh, I'm hoping around 25 will do it. All right, now in Acts chapter 15, I told you that when we were back in Acts chapter 10, and Peter was by a sovereign God sent up to the Gentile house of Cornelius, that God had more in mind than just that little group of people in Caesarea. God had in mind the whole sphere of Christianity. And now in Acts chapter 15, which as I've said before, is a parallel chapter to Galatians chapter 2. And Paul has now been out amongst the Gentiles for several years, establishing the churches up there in Asia Minor and especially up there at Antioch. And the Jews down at Jerusalem are still not accepted.
and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church, that is, that believing element of Jews, and of the apostles and elders, that would be Peter, James, and John, and the rest of them. I think James is still, no, James is already beheaded. He's gone. And so they declared all things that God had done with them, that is, amongst the Gentiles. Now verse 5. But again, even in, in Jerusalem, there arose up certain of the sect of Pharisees, but not the whited sepulchers that Jesus had to deal with. What kind of Pharisees? Believers. See? They were Pharisees, but they had believed that Jesus was the Christ. They were members of that Jerusalem church. And these Pharisees said that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. That's what it says. Not just in my Bible, it says it in yours. And this, remember, is 23, 22 years after Pentecost. Time has been going by. Paul has been out amongst the Gentiles now ever since 40 A.D. That's after his three years down in the desert. So for 12 years, Paul has been laboring amongst the Gentiles. All right, so verse 6. The apostles and the elders came together to consider the matter. Now verse 7. And when there had been much disputing. Now, I don't know how long this has been going on, but I think.
They all shut up and they gave audience to Barnabas and Paul who declared what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. All right, now let's go to Galatians chapter 2 and see what Paul says about this situation. Same thing, it's the same event. And here's how you figure out the chronology on some of these things. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 1, Paul writes, Then 14 years after, and he's just been rehearsing his apostleship and how he was commissioned on the road to Damascus, and we've placed that event as A.D. 37. 14 years after A.D. 37, what do you get? A.D. 51. It's the same event. All right, so he says, 14 years after, that is, after his conversion, I went up by revelation, that is, to Jerusalem, and communicated unto them, that is, the Jewish believers at Jerusalem, and I communicated unto them that gospel, see how he identifies it, that gospel which I preach where? Among the Gentiles. See how he's differentiating? But privately to them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. Now you come all the way down to verse 5. He says, To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour. What's he talking about? Well, the same thing that Acts 15 said. There was much disputation, and these Jewish believers were coming down on him. You cannot expect those Gentiles to be saved if they don't keep the law and are circumcised. But Paul said, we didn't give in. We did not back down.
tremendous gospel of grace because the Apostle Paul did not give in. And that's where it's all at. All right, now, you get the picture? Now I have another little analogy that God does something way back in time for something that'll come much later. And while we're looking at it, go over to Galatians chapter 4, just a second. Because I think the two tie together. Now I've got time to do this. Now in Galatians chapter 4, this same little book, this little letter written to the Gentile churches up in Asia Minor for the purpose of trying to tell them that they're not under the law, they're under grace. Because the Judaizers were following Paul everywhere he went. And they're not going to give up. They're still going to maintain that these Gentiles can't be saved unless they embrace Judaism and keep the law. And so he had to hurriedly write this little letter to the Galatians to admonish them not to give in because you're not under the law, you're under grace. All right, so you come into chapter 4, and it's one of my favorite studies. If I, if I were ever given uh, an opportunity to just off the, off the cuff give a 30 or 40 minute Bible study, this would be my first choice. And here Paul says in verse 19,
And she goes to Abraham, she says, get rid of her, get her out of my sight, I can't stand it. And Abraham did, he sent her away. But see, God intervened. Out there in the desert someplace, God went out to, to Hagar and she says, Hagar, you go right back to Sarah's tent and you just stay there. All right, now what did God know? Thirteen years later, God would tell Hagar and Ishmael to go right back where he'd brought her from in the first place, out in the desert. Now, why? Well, you see, if they hadn't gone back to Abraham and Sarah's tent, if Ishmael had not been on the scene when Isaac came, Paul would not have the allegory. You got the picture? So you see, way back there in Genesis, God set the stage for the two boys, Ishmael and Isaac, to be raised at least for a little bit in proximity and then to be sent apart so that Paul could say, now look, this is exactly what we have to do with the law. We have to treat the law and legalism the same way that Abraham treated Ishmael. And you know, in my classes, I've said it over and over, God didn't tell Abraham and Sarah, well, give Hagar a tent next door. He didn't say, well, why don't you just give them a little tent out behind or a half mile down the line? But where did he send them? Clear out into the desert, see? What was the purpose? Law and grace won't mix. <laughs> Law and grace can't mix. You have to cast out the bondwoman and her son. And you see, this is what Paul had to contend for then. I think it just about drove him up the wall that he was not going to give in and command his Gentile converts to embrace any kind of legalism. 